arrested. Okay, could everyone take your seats, please? Okay, we're going to go ahead and call the meeting back to order again. Okay. And uh, Audrey, you ready? Yes. Uh, this is a continuation of a second reading that was originally held on December uh, 4th. Uh, this is an ordinance of the City of Bonita Springs, Florida, establishing a paid time off policy providing for an effective date. Um, City Council, the history is in the background of the uh, green sheet. I also have uh, Meg Weiss here, who is... Thanks. As City Council requested, uh, providing you some additional information. Okay, Carl, you want to uh, lead us well, off? Yeah, here's well, well, again, just a reminder the Council had asked uh, for a reiteration of, of what had occurred here that you have already uh, considered and approved, and actually we've implemented. And Meg's here to kind of d to remind you of all of that uh, so everybody's on the same page. Meg? Okay, thank you. Meg? As Carl and Audrey um, discussed, that this is just the official document for the ordinance. Um, in July, the policy changes were adopted. They were implemented October 1st. Um, there is a memo in the backup for your green sheet that reviews this, but I'll go over a little bit. The reason we reviewed the policy is there were some concerns over future financial impact on our sustaining <coughs> our vacation and sick time policy. We, um, we as management presented a PTO or paid time off policy. Three of the major things that we addressed were in the prior policy, we had no sick time maximum. It was never ending. You could have a never ending balance. We put a maximum on the PTO, which combined the sick, the vacation, and the personal time. It was a maximum of 600 hours. Our current and past employees, their accrual rates increased every single year. We changed that and spread it out over five years. So new employees, our um, past employees were grandfathered in and they stayed. We didn't change when their accrual was. New employees, their accrual changes every five years, which is pretty consistent with other municipalities as well as the private sector. Um, and then on payout, our prior, you got 100% of your vacation paid out, which had a maximum balance of 240, as well as a fourth of your sick time balance. Now we have changed it to a half of your full PTO balance to a max of 240. So it's just a max of 240. Okay. Mo motion to adopt the ordinance. We have motion to adopt the ordinance. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Martin. Aye. Councilman Slackta. Aye. Mayor Nelson. Aye. Councilman Simmons. Aye. Councilwoman Simons. Aye. Councilman Longcart. Aye. Councilman McIntosh. Aye. Thank you, Meg. All right. Audrey, uh, what do you got now? Uh, thank you. Um, I'll let Joe Ferber read the title block into the record. It's a second reading and public hearing of the following ordinance. I just want to point out I reviewed the affidavit and it is legally sufficient. Thank you very much. Joe. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Mayor, City Council. For the record, Joseph Ferber, Assistant City Attorney. Uh, this is a second reading and public hearing of the following ordinance, an ordinance restating and amending Bonita Springs Ordinance Number 09-02 amending Chapter 5 of the Land Development Code relating to the Historic Preservation Board, providing a definition for Florida Master Site File, uh, discontinuing financial disclosure filing requirements with the state for Historic Preservation Board members, providing for appeals pursuant to the LDC Section <coughs> 4-83, providing for administrative approval on requests for regular certificates of appropriateness, providing for posting as the method for notice for public hearing on request for special certificate of appropriateness, providing for exterior colors for designated historic resources within old 41 overlay, providing for conflicts of law, severability codification, Scrivener's errors, inclusion in code, and an effective date. Uh, this uh, proposed ordinance appeared before the uh, LPA on um, December 12th, 2013, uh, at which time uh, they uh, uh, determined that it was consistent with the comprehensive plan. I have, uh, I'm here to answer any questions. The changes are set forth in the green sheet. Okay, uh, Council, you have any questions? 
I, I have a comment, but okay. I, I would motion to adopt the ordinance. Uh, I think we have to have public comment on this, Aubrey. Yep. Yes. Uh, okay, uh, let's, let's go ahead and have public comment at this time. I'll invite public comment on this uh, <coughs> particular agenda item. If anyone wishes to speak, please come forward. Okay, seeing none, uh, you have a uh, comment. Yeah. Um, when I got on the council eight years ago, I was the fourth vote to create this historic preservation board with the hope that we would at least be able to get a demolition delay passed. And that I was hoping that it would be in this go around on, on their um, uh, recommended ordinances. They did uh, decide that, that they want to proceed and do that to, to propose a, rec a demolition delay, which simply they proposed for um, delaying demolition for 90 days until an alternative can be found to either preserve the, or purchase or um, save the resource. And I'm disappointed that it's not here. I hope this council in the future will take that simple recommendation because currently I know that they have to have a criteria laid out about how that process is done. And I, I hope they're moving forward to do that. Um, you know, I, I'll adopt this stuff, but I'm just disappointed that, that wasn't done by now, eight years later, and that uh, in order to preserve some of those things that are special in Bonita Springs, that you really need this. Our historic preservation ordinance is one of the weakest in the state. We don't need to be known for that, especially when we have such cool resources in our downtown area. So I thank you for everybody who's worked on this, and Joe, I thank you for working, and John. And uh, I, dot, I say adopt the ordinance. Thank you. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Slacta? Aye. Mayor Nelson? Aye. Councilman Simmons? Aye. Councilwoman Simons? Aye. Councilman Longhart? Aye. Councilman McIntosh? Aye. Councilwoman Martin? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. All right. What's next, Aubrey? Thank you. The next ordinance is, and this is a long uh, title block, so... <laughs> Be patient. An amendment to Benita Springs Land Development Code amending and restating Chapter 2, the administration chapter, which pro provides Article 1, 2 1, general request for interpretation of code provisions and compliance <coughs> agreements, Article 2, concurrency management system, providing for statutory authority, applicability of article, intent of article, purpose, concurrency, certif certification, concurrent development orders, management information system, variances and appeals, revocation of concurrency uh, certificates, non liability of city manager, and penalties for providing false alarm information, Article 3, development agreements providing for statutory authority, applicability, intent, and purpose. Um, applications for development agreements, minimum requirements of a statutory development agreement, notices and hearings, amendment of amendment or cancellation of development agreement by mutual consent, reservation of home rule authority and conflicts, Article 4, transfer of development rights providing for purpose, applicability, administration, conflicts, computation of units and limitations, Article 5, reserved, Article 6, impact fees. Section 2-261 through 2-277, road impact fees. Sections 2-301 through 2-316, uh, regional park impact fees. Section 2-341 through 2-356, community park impact fees. Sections 2-381 through 2-397, fire protection and emergency medical services impact fees. Article 7, the special master. Article 8, the Private Property Rights Protection Act with proceedings under the Burt J. Harris Jr. Private Property Rights Protection Act. Article 9, the development order approval process for capital improvement projects. Article 10, hurricane preparedness. Article 11, code enforcement providing for conflicts of law, severability, codification, Scrivener's errors, inclusion in code and effective date. Before you start, let me just say a few things. And that is one, I have reviewed the title block. It is legally sufficient. This is a second public hearing. Um, the public can talk. And also, uh, there are some additional changes that are not in this draft. I didn't want to have draft confusion. Uh, the LPA reviewed the ordinance for consistency with the comprehensive plan. And I have to tell you, Mr. Cola Pietro, who he takes an extended trip sometimes, so he's back. And he found a lot of little typos that will be corrected. Um, they were not significant. If you want me the better approach, instead of me having to try to tell you what those uh, typos are, is go listen to the LPA meeting. <coughs> because mm -hmm. each one of them were put in. And that's not just for this art uh, uh, one, but also for uh, seven, and I believe there was another ordinance too, that he made some corrections. 
Uh, John does have a presentation. Uh, and also, I do want to point out on the second page of the green sheet is a summary of the changes, and even more so, the areas where we don't have changes. And the reason we don't have changes at this point is uh, these are more ministerial type changes. There are some things that we need to have more policy calls and just do not have the time to work on. And that goes into the proportionate fair share, concurrency, and those types. John, please present. John, I'm going to invite you to go ahead. I'm going to turn the gavel over to Steve just for a few minutes because everybody got a break but me. So, okay. <laughs> oops. He's going to have to take a walk. Yes, sir. <laughs> just come back. <laughs> Dr. McIntosh, this question goes to you. Oh. These, uh, Chapter 2 is one of those chapters that is generally the land of misfit process. Those items which do not have a home in other chapters wind up in Chapter 2. And and why As is this result, for me? There has not been, <laughs> there has not been significant Misfit amendments. thing? Well, I don't know. <laughs> there, there have not been significant amendments since the city adopted the Lee County version of this chapter. Most, uh, not all, but nearly all of the amendments that are proposed in this text uh, result in either updating references to state statute or city ordinance or uh, transitioning from the Lee County process to the city process. There's also the inclusion of definitions and there are a few other items that reflect current practice, but there really has not been um, necessarily a change in policy or an intent to shift uh, how the city operates with this. So if you would like, I would be more than happy to please. do the presentation or we can <coughs> simply I, go to questions. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Bill. Yes, sir. These are the items that have been addressed. As you heard the city attorney read through this list uh, in the title block uh, where the amendments are located. Uh, starting off, and we'll go chronologically through the ordinance, compliance agreements, as I said, they deleted the reference to the hearing examiner and uh, also allows for these compliance agreements to provide flexibility to address the intent of the code as opposed to the specific language of the code. Concurrency. Uh, has these changes proposed? Uh, as I said, it goes in ref changes and reflects current state statute. It does include new definitions, which were not th there before. Uh, removes a reference to the Lee County Hearing Examiner, and also gets rid of some older language that has to do with uh, times under previous concurrency regulations, and those no longer <coughs> apply. Developing agreements. Um, same changes that you saw to the administrative code and state statute, uh, inserts definitions, uh, removes a reference to the projects uh, that have a right to enter into the development agreement, making it a little more broad, and addresses conflicts between adopted ordinances and development agreements, and that language was not there before, so it is a clarification. Transfer of development rights, very simple changes. Um, new definitions and new language as to uh, <coughs> transferring units between jurisdictions. I've lumped these three road or these three impact fees together because there were uh, almost uh, exact changes proposed in each roads, parks and community parks. And in each of those uh, you'll see these changes. Um, removing Lee County, replacing with Bonita Springs, administrative code and state statute changes, new definitions, uh, the county also had uh, district boundary maps and sub-districts where impact fees that were collected in one area needed to be spent in that area. The city being one district does not need those, uh, those maps or designations. Uh, talks about economic development being a purpose that you can use banked impact fees and modifies the appeal process to reflect recent changes that you made uh, so that you are the body that hears appeals and not the zoning board. Now there were specific changes for the road impact fees, uh, deleting the reference to the capital improvement program, uh, deleting references to old ordinances and regulations. Um, that was really the extent of that. The <coughs> parks includes language that would use uh, these banked impact fees for economic development purposes. Also uh, deletes references to uh, impact fees paid prior to 1989 and uh, <coughs> deletes the county reference to how they would handle agreements with municipalities. Community parks, only one change, uh, deletes a reference to pre-1985 impacts. 
uh, emergency management services impact fees. This, this goes into the section with fire. There were several changes, but they all tend to revolve around the fact that the city now encompasses the Estero Fire and Rescue District. And the city also recognized the EMS impact fees within this section of the Land Development Code for the annex the portions of the city. Gotcha. And that language was necessarily to be reflected here so we could go through the process. Were there any questions on this section? Council, you good? All right, good. good. Carry on. School impact fees. Um, the entire section generally was deleted because this is a county impact fee and as opposed to trying to keep up with any changes that they may or may not make through the years, it's easier just to reference their process, adopt their fee schedule, so whatever they do applies with us. That's public schools only? Yes, sir. Uh, special master proceedings. Uh, all the, the only changes made here were a uh, removal of the reference to the Lee County Hearing Examiner. Private property, same thing, removing the, the reference to the hearing examiner. Development order approvals, uh, process for capital improvements, um, just simply changes some language that was duplicative and was unnecessary in terms of referring to the city's corporate boundaries or uh, incorporated area. Hurricane preparedness, this basically assigns responsibility for positions to city officials as opposed to county officials. City manager, as you can see under 2-465, now has uh, the ability to determine the appropriateness of shelter impacts, evacuation impacts, construction of roads, and safe room mitigation. The public works uh, manager or director has the authority to review uh, spine road elevations to ensure that they meet the minimum elevation of the 25-year st storm event. Code enforcement saw some significant uh, changes, but I think some of the ones I would like to call to your attention are the fact that they're going to be capping uh, liens to the value of the property because uh, having liens that continue into infinity does not mean you would be able to ever enforce that or collect that money. Uh, an $18,000 piece of property can only collect so much in liens before it's financially unfeasible. Uh, also addresses some of the process for mitigation and for reciprocity. And those were the changes that we are proposing. All right. Good deal. By the way, what's with this Starscape, Star Trek? I love that it, man. I what's love up it. with that? Dark skies. Dust you got, you got some problems? It's Dust? No. It's, it's a conspiracy. The, I asked the other day, it's the, it's the projector. It, we're, we're looking at having to replace the projector. We so. have a new one ordered. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you are. That, that's enough answers. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? questions? Yeah, Bill. Like it, but uh, it is snow. On the back of the green Bill, go ahead. On the back of the green sheet, down at the <coughs> bottom, it says transfer of development rights may need changes depending on direction received after city council considers the DRGR area. What do you mean by that? Uh, what I mean by that, it means that um, I have heard different speakers during the DRGR talk about, uh, including yes. one that you've appointed to the Water uh, Strategy Task Force, talk about the desire to have it uh, transfer development rights, having greater flexibility to utilize them in association with Lee County for purposes of density. And um, that would be policy calls. Those changes, of course, can't be done at this time because at this point we don't have that policy, but that's something that uh, you may want to look at in the future, not this year. <laughs> and you know, Mayor May? Yes. Um, and if it's okay. Uh, the transfer of development rights doesn't necessarily have to go to Lee County. You could you develop a program where you transfer them in the city from, yes. like we've yes, kind of cities. done with the parks, you know. And we have, yeah, we do have environmental TDRs in the, in the chapter two, as John put, uh, put so eloquently in the beginning, this is the chapter that has it. So our TDR program, which is existing, which we do have, we've, um, We've only had one circumstance where we talked about using it and then the development did not go forward. Um, but that's something you know. that somebody, it, it's sort of like uh, cash in the city. I mean, somebody could buy those, develop, start buying development rights from people around town or something, right? Uh, well, well I, I don't think it's appropriate time to start talking about transfer development right. rights. All you've done is assert that in there so in case council does develop okay. a policy, right. it's right. in there. We have the yes, existing policy that's for all the That's all further charter. we need to go. It's okay, Ben. Got it? <laughs> Good. Yes. John, uh, refresh my memory. Uh, we, on your hurricane shelter slide, 
Yes, sir. Uh, given the new change in the elevations and all that, are, is the YMCA no longer a shelter? Uh, the 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 county has indicated that for most, depending upon the particular storm, it is <coughs> unlikely that that facility will be able to be opened and utilized by the county. Mm -hmm. However, there may be opportunities uh, during certain storm events where it might be able to be opened. Um, there are opportunities perhaps after the storm passes uh, that the facility might be able to use as long be used as, as long as it's within the parameters of the agreement that we have with the YMCA in the county. But that will uh, continue to be a county call. Gotcha. Yes. Okay, thank you, Carl. You do not meet the Red Cross standards. It really goes into does the county want to use it? Do they feel it's appropriate? Right. That's just for hurricane, but it could be used as a shelter if, like, God forbid, and there had been a large fire in town. <laughs> Right? It could be used for a shelter. The, the, uh, they don't distinguish when they're starting to put criteria together. I've never seen anything that says a shelter for one purpose uh, uh, is a shelter for other purposes, or not a shelter for other purposes. But when they have their standards, we do not meet those standards. It's basically an elevation type question. If the county decides to use it for a particular event, fire, flood, hurricane, that is their decision. But because it doesn't meet the Red Cross standard, it does become a choice as opposed to an automatic uh, assumption. We, we also need to be mindful again of our agreement with the YMCA. There are certain circumstances under which they are not prepared to give up the facility to to house perhaps fire victims. There, there may be some conflicts if that type of use were used or proposed. Okay. Council, do you have any more questions before mm. we go to public comment? Thanks, John. Thank you, John. At this time, any members of the public? Or do we have any? Oh, yeah, we do. Uh, any members of the public wish to speak at this time on this particular matter, please come forward. Uh, seeing none, Council, what's your pleasure? We are, this is the second reading. Would you like to, to accept? It? Yep. Move to accept. Is there a second? Second. We have motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Councilman McIntosh? Aye. Councilwoman Martin? Aye. Councilman Slack? Aye. Mayor Nelson? Aye. Councilman Simmons? Aye. Councilwoman Simons? Aye. Councilman Longhart. Aye. Okay, what do you got for us next there? Thank you. I have an amendment to Benita Springs Land Development Code, amending and replacing Chapter 7 Environmental of the City of Benita Springs Land Development Code, amending Section 7 41 through 7 81, Dock and Shoreline Structures, creating facility siting criteria, transfer of watercraft slip uh, credits, TSC and Beach Dune walkover provisions, amending 7 111. Uh, through 7-116 marine sanitation providing for conflicts of law severability codification scrivener's errors inclusion in code and effective date this is the second reading of the ordinance the ordinance was first heard on december 4th uh, there are some additional little minor changes that were made to the ordinance by the lpa that are uh, scrivener's type errors uh, those will be corrected um, later like i said before like the other ordinance um, <coughs> If you want to hear them, go listen to the LPA meeting, especially the part about BOA tramp as opposed to boat ramp. They get two <laughs> words instead of one word. Nice. They have some very humorous people. Boat I do tramp. want to point out that um, <laughs> at approximately 1130 this morning, I did receive a comment from a design professional who is involved with a project that affects the city of Bonita Springs and says that the proposed change could affect um, a situation with their marina. At this time, I would like to continue this ordinance for um, some time to work with him on that to a date and time certain so that we can resolve any issues. Um, okay. All right. Council, do you have any objection to that? Not at all. I don't, but could I, I make a comment? Yes. You know, at the last meeting, I did mention that up and down the Imperial River, there are docks. Yes. Falling into the river. Mm -hmm. And I was looking in here, um, you know, you have certain um clauses about who will be responsible for maintaining the facilities and i just um i i didn't find anything in here about demolition of docks other than and i could be wrong so uh but is there a way to address this i saw you know the transfer of slip credits which you know that makes sense we've approved it and maybe they can if they can do it within the confines allowable and all that um mr mayor <clears throat> if i if i might if just you might respond. yes please um so yes, th that the concerns about the conditions of the dock 
ships up and down the Imperial River and other waterways in the city mm -hmm. um, uh, is a code-related issue, and code enforcement has been instructed to go out and and uh, work with the owners to get those good. situations resolved. Oh, very good. So, so it is a code issue. But um, Yeah, and a permitting issue maybe for them, too. Well, uh, if they uh, have to make major repairs, sure. Yeah, so, Ben, um, or because you're in the docks, is if they had a, a dock in the past and we're asking them to remove it, will they be able to rebuild that? Yeah, I don't see any problem within the existing ordinance or this ordinance in, in people being able to do what they need to do to replace their docks. Okay, so we can ask people to remove the crumbling whatever's going on and then they won't have to be afraid that they have to leave their crumbling mess that they won't be able to be allowed to have a dock there. Would that be correct in saying? Well, yeah. I mean, th their options will be to repair or replace or tear down. Yeah, and we have, but I mean, if it's non-conforming <coughs> to today's standards, I don't think we have manatee protection that far up where I'm, I'm thinking about. It's really no different than any other structure in existence. Houses, That's fences, anything. Okay. Everybody has to apply by the same rules. Very good. If I, I may, thank you. Um, uh -oh. I also want to point out that I have uh, Mike Kirby's email. I'll be incorporating those changes into the draft ordinance. Okay. Um, and I would recommend to continue it to a date certain. Uh, I would suggest February 19th. Okay. Council, is that your pleasure? Good. It's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you make a, make a motion? I'll make a second. Motion. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? Thank you, Mike. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Martin? Aye. Councilman Slack? Aye. Mayor Nelson? Aye. Councilman Simmons? Aye. Councilman Simons? Aye. Councilman Longhart? Aye. Councilman McIntosh? Aye. Okay. Thank uh, you, Carl. Audrey, you have anything else for us? Yes, one second. I have one more ordinance, and this is an ordinance of the City of Benita Springs relating to building and construction codes, identifying work not requiring a permit, providing for conflict, severability, codification, inclusion in codes, Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. Uh, the ordinance was reviewed by the LPA and is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Um, I have reviewed the affidavit of publication. It is legally sufficient. Uh, the change that was made by council is in there, which is um, replacement of water heaters when it does not generate a technology change. Mm -hmm. Any change in technology will require a permit. So in a, I use the example, a tank system to a tankless water heater system, and that um, is in the actual ordinance, and that's what's not required for a permit. Um, <coughs> if you have questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Move okay, this, uh, I'm going to go to public comment. Any oh, one member of the public wishing to speak this time, please come forward on this particular issue. All right. Seeing none. <laughs> public comments over. Uh, yes. Move to approve. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? Thank you about the water heaters, guys. There you go. <laughs> Nicely done. Roll call. Councilman Slata. Aye. Mayor Nelson. Aye. Councilman Simmons. Aye. Councilwoman Simons. Aye. Councilman Longhart. Aye. Councilman McIntosh. Aye. Councilwoman Martin. Aye. Okay. Audrey, do you have anything else for us mm -hmm. under this item? Under public hearings, no, sir. Okay, we will move to public comment at this time, and uh, therefore anyone wishing to speak on any <laughs> item, please come forward. Alberto Bayer, Macomb Lane. I'm here to make a request, a specific request for a fingerprint report that was taken by your law enforcement contractor on my BMW wagon. It was as a result of an assault that I was a victim of, and the subject contractor has refused to comply with providing me with the report. I'm asking for the result of the fingerprint, the fingerprinting that they did on the vehicle. Because so far all I have is a uh, damaged paint job. <laughs> they used their black um, material to go through the process. And uh, I believe that the reason why they're not providing the report is because of what the report is showing, which is that, uh, and this is a speculation on my part, that the uh, assailant is a police protected party, which therefore would represent 
and obstruction of justice. Many thanks. Th thank you very much. Anyone else this time? Please come forward. Words of wisdom. <laughs> Kathy McGrath, for the record, I always like to bring some happy news, positive news. You all recognized Professor David Green earlier today. He is such an asset. David is a friend of the Bonita Nature Place. He was on the board when we were incorporated. But what I want to tell you is I think he had an achievement this month that pleased him even more than this award. On December 5th, he and his wife, Tanya, welcomed their son, Gavin Bryce. So I guess we're going to have some little professors running around. And by the way, <laughs> have you all noticed how much younger the professors and the doctors are all getting these days? Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Getting older. Anyway, I just wanted, <laughs> I wanted to let you know that. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. Anyone else this time? Please come forward. Seeing none, uh, that's in a public comment for this particular period in time. The city attorney's report. I believe you have one more thing you need to bring forward. Yes, sir. And this is to uh, uh, Justin, do you want to proceed? Sure. <laughs> you got it easy. Morning, Mayor, <laughs> Council Members, Justin Diner, Staff Attorney for the City of Benita Springs. Um, Next on the agenda, we have an approval of the form of the lease with Liberty Lighthouse Church of God in the city of Bonita Springs to be used at the closing on the city's purchase of the parcel of land located at 27357 Felt Avenue, Bonita Springs, Florida, 34135. Um, this was, uh, this lease deals with the acquisition of land that was um, originally authorized by you on September 4th, 2013 with Liberty Lighthouse Church of God. And um, the purchase was for was for a million dollars, and the purchase had special conditions that we would release the property back to them at a subsidized price. And um, the lease has been drafted in accordance to those conditions, and it's up for your approval. So, if you have okay, any Council, what's your pleasure? Good job. Make a motion to authorize and have staff sign the lease, and congratulate our young man here for doing such a nice presentation. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, I think in, included in that motion, we should send a copy of this video to his family. That's for right. <laughs> oh, I'll amend my motion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys don't want to drill questions into him. Ask. But I'm going to do a little photoshopping on it before it goes out. All right. Anyway, oh, no, no, roll no. call. <laughs> Mayor Nelson. Aye. Councilman Simmons. Aye. Councilwoman Simons. Aye. Councilman Longhart. Aye. Councilman McIntosh. Aye. Councilwoman Martin. Aye. Councilman Slack. Aye. Nicely done. Thank you. Great Thank job. you very much. And do you want to point out, we probably will be having the closing done either today or not today, either tomorrow. Here's Christmas. Hopefully okay. tomorrow. Good. We got nice. it. So I need you to sign some papers too, <laughs> sir. Hey, okay. Um, I just want to wish everybody a happy holidays. And Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. City Matters re Report, we're up to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, council members, first off, uh, as the monthly, uh, it's that time of the month for a review of the monthly financial report. Do you have any questions of what was submitted by staff? Nope. Seeing none, I will continue on if it's okay, Mayor. Go right ahead. Uh, <clears throat> B on the agenda is approve a revenue sharing agreement between Lee County and the City of Bonita Springs for the downtown area. This is something that's already been talked about today, but if I might, just add a few uh, words. First off, as, f as far as I think we're c everyone's concerned in this, including the county, this is an historic event. Um, it took a lot of work on the part of a lot of people, and I will recognize those folks in a minute, but uh, this, is, this is not a TIF agreement, tax increment financing. This is not a CRA and all of the problems that are associated with those CRAs. This is a revenue sharing agreement with Lee County, between the Lee County and the city. It's based upon the formula that is TIF-like, if you will, which is uh, re uh, measuring the growth in revenue um, in the specified capture area uh, over a period of not more than 25 years. Uh, our projections uh, for purposes of just estimation uh, was that that growth percentage could be uh, five percent a year? Uh, we would certainly hope that we can we can hit that target. I will tell you the growth between our base year of 12 and 13 was 3.15 percent, and that was with doing nothing down there, okay, and without some of the homes that are the new homes that are under construction, without them hitting the tax rolls. So 
one of the reasons we wanted to time this agreement the way it is is that we could hit what we consider to be the bottom of the market, if you will, and pick up the natural growth uh, of uh, increased and assessed value as time goes on. And so we think we've done that, uh, and that's to the city's advantage. Under this agreement, the county will contribute 85 percent of their growth revenue for up to the next 25 years or until they reach 50 percent of the cost of the improvements, including financing, whichever comes first, and they are aware of that. Now, this is strictly for improvements that we have laid in front of them, as spoken about before. There are four categories, sidewalks, roads, drainage, and land acquisition. We expect uh, that the church that we just talked about for a million dollars, that is the million dollars for that land acquisition. That, that this money, this fund of money, um. will pay for that, that acquisition. Um, the county likes this because it's for a set period of time. Uh, that their growth is solely their contribution. So if they get more growth, they get to pay off their portion faster. If they get less growth, they may not have to pay their 50% share. Because if 25 years hits before they've paid their 50%, then, you know, we're, we're on the hook for that. But based upon the financing that you already are, have done a first read on, uh, we expect to be out of the financing of this particular uh, set of projects in 15 years. Um, so the county will continue probably to pay us beyond 15 years because they will not have hit 25 years or 50 percent of, of their obligation. Now I have to tell you that uh, we also promised them that we would not be charging them any staff time. So any of the time that it took for Audrey or me or any of the other staff members to work on this or the amount of time that the staff will take to work on this in the future with regards to uh, Matt Feeney and his team, Lisa Pace and the finance department, you know, that's all uh, on the city. Um, however, any consultants that we hire, any project managers that we hire uh, are, will be included in the cost of improvements and add that financing as well. Um, this was very much a team effort, just like a lot of things we have to do here. We, you can't rely on one individual to get it done. Um, and I will tell you, I want to thank John for his efforts. Uh, Arlene Hunter uh, was involved in this. The community development team, and I want to call out Jay Sweet in particular for his efforts at running the projected numbers, uh, working through the issues of trying to be a non-CRA with us. Uh, and of course, Lisa Pace, who has handled the financing and will continue to be responsible for monitoring uh, that as we go on. And then also thanks to Matt uh, and his team who have not only provided guidance uh, through the process to get us where we're at today, but will be primarily responsible for taking on the projects that uh, we are headed for down the road here. So uh, uh, just, just a great team. Um, I am uh, pleased and proud to be able to serve with every one of them. Um, this is a big deal for the city, and uh, you, you should be proud of your staff for pulling this off because they did a great job. So um, with that, I am recommending, unless you have questions, I'm recommending approval of the revenue sharing agreement that was adopted by the council or the, the, uh, county, the <coughs> county commission yesterday unanimously. Council, what's your pleasure? Make uh, a motion. Make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. I think we should approve this. Any, uh, any comment? <laughs> yes. Yeah, go ahead. Carl. Fantastic job. Thank you, sir. Uh, fantastic job. Thank you. It was a wonderful day yesterday. It, wonderful day yesterday. And, and just so everybody understands, this probably means 50% of this deal for the county probably means $14.5 million from them mm -hmm. on this project, which will be great. Huge. Big, well, big and I, I think an important part of this, I don't want to received a couple of unusual emails from our friends to the north. Uh, uh, about this, um, it's important to realize that without this agreement, without us doing the things that we are doing, you wouldn't have had the growth to begin with. So I don't want anybody mm -hmm. to think that the county's having to cough up money because that money would not exist if we weren't doing the development there, if we didn't do the things there to allow the <coughs> development. So that's, that's the crux of the yeah. entire argument is that without us doing the improvements there, there wouldn't be the growth necessary there so really they were really committing nothing other than the revenues that 
would not have existed if they hadn't participated. So that was really, mm -hmm. really essentially the whole gears that ran the thing. That, and that's true, Mayor. And if I might add to that, the county's own numbers that they ran uh, since the date of our incorporation, that particular capture area only grew annually by 0.33% yep. since the date of our incorporation. This last year it grew 3.15%. So I think we're already on the way up there. But yes, you're, you're exactly right. That growth would not occur. Uh, the private sector interest that we already have would not be there without some promise of improvements in that area and with these projects going forward. So we were able to, to set aside, <coughs> I think, I think 100% of the worry that they had that they were going to somehow lose some of the revenue sharing here. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't participate, you're not going to get it anyway. Yep. You participate at least in the future you're going to receive it so yeah. that was that was the, the argument that that actually won the day even for frank mann which was yep. a, that yes was a tough that sell. was a little that was a little that scary was a tough sell. <laughs> mayor i mayor if i may I, I want to thank the county commission too for being our partner on this absolutely i i specifically want to thank brian Heyman, who brought up the point you just <laughs> mentioned that he, he asked well if we don't do this what's the outcome going to be it, which would be negative and nothing and you know so, um, you know, what, what was their revenue going to be? And they realized that making an investment in Bonita Springs was actually a win-win situation. And I want to thank them for unanimously voting for that, which I suspect is what we're going to do. And I have to tell you, um, it was a pleasure to be a part of what I think was one of the most successful and aggressive lobbying efforts that uh, the city has been <laughs> involved in. But uh, it worked. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. And thanks to the County Commission. Awesome job. Absolutely. Okay, uh, motion and a second. Any other discussion? Roll call. Councilman Simmons? Aye. Councilwoman Simons? Aye. Councilman Longcart? Aye. Councilman McIntosh? Aye. Councilwoman Martin? Aye. Councilman Slacktop? Aye. Mayor Nelson? Aye. <coughs> We should be all like high fiving and stuff like that, but we don't got okay, time. Go we don't have time for that. Pass it on. Pass it on. Give me okay. some. Give me some. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. Right, right, right. um, That's the first, by the way, right there. Yeah. <laughs> Never seen that happen. Group in the high five. Movie, okay. Or we should start a wave to do the end of that. Carl, what else you got for us? Listen. So the last time, since the last time we met, news came out that the city of Bonita Springs will be getting 240 of the first Hertz employees. Uh, in our town, and that is because they have leased um, the old Robin Stuckey facility up there around um, Bonefish Grill, and uh, we're we're excited about it because we were able to be a part of that. We were able to work through that process with them, um, expedite the issue for them, um, and and do the kinds of things that more and more the city of Bonita Springs is becoming known to do, and that is work with business, get them in here, cut the red tape, do the right thing, but cut the red tape and make it easy on businesses to do what they do best, and that's their business. And so I want to thank uh, our entire development team for working on that, including Arlene. Uh, it's a big win for us. Uh, that that it, it is a temporary one, unfortunately. They'll be here probably until fall of 15, we think, at this point. But uh, we... We've been welcoming Hertz all along, and we just now welcome them uh, officially to the ben city of Bonita Springs uh, coming up very soon. So, again, staff, thank you for, for all of that. And the last thing I've got is I think it's been another great year for the city, and mm -hmm. I, I look forward to another big uh, year in, in 2014. I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, uh, and a happy and prosperous New Year to everyone, our residents, our volunteers our staff, and of course, our elected officials. Thank you for all you do. Thank you very much, it. Carl. Thank you. Hey, Carl, and I just want to say for anybody that might be listening out there, I know there was confidentially confidentiality involved with this because I can't say I exactly pressed you, Carl, but you were hearing from me, hey, what's going on with that old Robin Stuckey's building? I have people from District 4 asking me. People are driving by. Something's going on there. What's happening, Carl? Carl. <laughs> yeah. Carl, well, what's happening there? I know. And let, let me just suggest to you that, uh, just so everybody who's watching understands, that... Um, they were watching, that all right. There's, there's, there's times when we're just, we're not able to tell even our council members uh, what's going on particular economic development projects. And I just want you to know that that's part of the expectation of the private sector when they come into a city. Uh, but still, that doesn't make the staff any, uh, 
any uh, less uncomfortable when we have to tell an elected official, one of our bosses, about the fact that we really can't share that with them right now, but we'll happy to be happy to tell them about it as soon as we can. So. No, no, and that was definitely a compliment to you because I certainly understand that process and uh, also a compliment to the city of Bonita Springs. People keep a very close eye on to what's going on. So yeah, great And work. that's good. And, and again, we welcome the questions and we will always answer them to the fullest ability that we have. Thank you very much. How about Rural King? Yes. Talk I about think, that, John. I think there was an announcement in today's paper that Rural King, um, operating out of the Midwest, is taking over the Target facility, right. the vacant All Target right. facility, target. Um, <laughs> on US 41. Oh, awesome. Right across from Benita Bay. Oh, that's Rural awesome. King. It's a cross of tractor supply and something else. Agricultural oh, my God. I hope they have hay. Okay. <sighs> I thought the church was going to deliver water. Nope. The church no. Mm -hmm. She's I didn't know. <laughs> Most fun store in the world. I know it. I know a church. <laughs> <laughs> We're okay. Cross between tractor supply and something else. Target. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. That's <laughs> awesomeness. Okay. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. That's all I have here. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Mayor and Council Member Items. A resolution for, by, um, let's see. Oh, uh, Councilwoman Martin. Yes, please. I'd like to just get right to it. And I'd like to make a motion to reappoint Ms. Marks and Mr. Wheeler to the Tree Advisory Board. Is there a second? Second. Second. second? There is a second. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Simons. Aye. Councilman Longcart. Aye. Councilman McIntosh. Aye. Councilwoman Martin. Aye. Councilman Slachta. Aye. Mayor Nelson. Aye. Councilman Simmons. Aye. Okay, item B. And the next one. Uh, I'd like to also make the recommendation to reappoint Ms. Joy Cooper to the Art and Public Places Board. And who, by the way, she's an art teacher at Benita Middle. Yep. Oh, second. Second. Uh, yep. second. And uh, any other discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Longcart. Aye. Councilman McIntosh. Aye. Councilwoman Martin. Aye. Councilman Slachta. Aye. Mayor Nelson. Aye. Councilman Simmons. Aye. Councilwoman Simons. Aye. Okay. And uh, Councilman Simons, um, you have an item here. It says, discuss and decide how to pursue compliance and continuance of a corridor landscape compliance program. Yep. If you read the green sheet, you pretty much know uh, prior to uh, our friend uh, Councilman Simmons arriving on board, uh, Councilman Spear brought forward and we approved to move forward with trying to get uh, commercial properties into compliance on our corridors and then it was staff consolidated it to the old 41 quarter. I was actually hoping it'd be beneath Beach Road, but hey, so there we are. I thought it would be a good idea while we're looking at our landscaping uh, that we're doing, that we also help to boost up the um, the city's, uh, the, zoning, the zoning conditions of properties in the city with that landscaping that you really get a pow, a boom on that. So. Uh, Mike Kirby's here to speak about it, I suppose. I didn't know you'd be here, Mike. I thought it'd be on my lonesome trying to explain this, but good to see you. Oh, thank okay. you. Uh, yes. Hello. What, what would you suggest? Actually, this is a, up for discussion with all of us because Old 41 is going to be, you know, rebuilt mm -hmm. because of this. And are they going to tear up the... Um, or put in underground lines and tear up if we restore the landscaping on one side these things you know what I mean when this first started I don't think we were that far along with the old 41 now that we are I don't I don't know what the plans are so we need to actually hash this out and figure out if we want to continue with this and you know with with the plans that um, are going to go forward with old 41 okay uh, Janet I think that it, it's a perfect time that if we're going to be making changes and, and there's going to be things happening that this is the time then that we would implement that let's get that landscaping up to code and, and up to what our expectations should be. And uh, I'm all for it. All for it. That, that was one of my questions, Mayor, too. Yeah. Um, the other question was uh, because of staff time and because we had this small grant to have the intern uh, who did the because it was quite it was quite hard to go up and get all the plans at Lee County mm -hmm. Development Service uh, Community Development which we now have in our inventory but that's just for old 41 so now <coughs> you know I drive around and I remember when things were built which means I've been here a long time um, and what they had in place and that it's starting to fall apart and you know I report some of that stuff actually it's on little properties that aren't taking care of other stuff um, but 
the landscaping starting to sort of disappear with their zoning conditions and I'd like to see those brought back I know it's not an easy job but now that we have the major like some stuff out of the way maybe we can get to this M well, mr. mayor yeah I, I have a question about this in particular you're probably gonna get right to the point here but uh, to me it seems like two things are, yes. are it, do do we have a problem keeping up with compliance of existing land development orders right if that's a function I think of staff staff you know if we need to get on to that if we have a problem doing that we need to figure out why and then you have you have people that are, have older properties uh, d does council want to try to incentivize them putting in mm -hmm. develop a program by in which they're contacted mm -hmm. and then we offer some type of incentive mm -hmm. to get them to do things is sure. is that basically what we're talking it, it, about? it was a little bit in, in actually what I was gonna say dovetails nicely into what you had just said mm -hmm. it, it, the city has a lot of programs going on right now you've got your mega landscape project you have uh, now <laughs> you have old 41 that's going to be rebuilt extraordinary so there are there are several pieces that are in motion what I would suggest is you allow us the opportunity to go back and make sure that we have a process that works mm -hmm. together across the board as opposed mm -hmm. to having this as a standalone piece mm -hmm. so that where we focus our our uh, enforcement efforts if that's the direction you choose to go is also where we're focusing our new landscape efforts so you're getting the most bang for your buck and kind of work through the city that way if that is your choice uh, if you do not wish to pursue the enforcement portion of this just let us know and we will carry out your wishes mayor yes um, yeah now we've already done the work on old 41 so for that we do have a incentive program I think we've got the old 41 grant program that these folks could take advantage of put their landscaping in really kind of give that bump mm -hmm. uh, if we're gonna do uh, landscaping on the wet you know if there's gonna be any kind of utility burying that would be on the west side um, and I haven't really heard this council go yeah well, let's uh, spend a million dollars and do that um, the first place to do that would be south of Terry and we got most of that fundage anyhow so um, I would say on old 41 for the rest of the city I would say uh, exactly what you said create some kind of incentive program for them which I think we have under economic development we already have an economic development uh, coming just coming to mind if we if because look when we have a zoning case in front of us we mishmash over this oh they need to have a D buffer or a C buffer if we're not going to stand up for what our decision is on on community developments recommendation and our approval and sometimes bumping up the requirements then why bother doing that in a zoning case if we're not going to say you know mandatory requirement you need to comply with your zoning conditions well and maybe that's what we need to approach this is just to, just to ask John does it you know to to take an inventory or examine and just see how well we're doing so far as these compliance issues mm -hmm. and you may come up with a new number that says you know out of the 150 uh, development orders that are out there you know what 50 of them are are lacking or 100 of them are lacking and, and maybe maybe you can uh, suggest something system-wide between you and code enforcement how you would approach this and how aggressively because if it becomes a, a person hour kind of a thing well uh, that's what I would like that's what I would suggest that you bring back mm -hmm. to us is Th that's the low-hanging fruit those are the ones we know that we can yeah. do something about and that they should do something about if we can't do anything about those what's the sense in going out to people and trying to incentivize people who don't have to do it yes absolutely let's, let's, let's get the low-hanging fruit mayor, first. mayor we mr. already know that let me, let me let them answer yeah. that first. Hey, mr. mayor if I might say first off you know if it's an enforcement issue we shouldn't have to bring that back to you we should just be doing it right, all right because that's the laws you passed we should be you know we should be enforcing those things uh, the challenge is for the second group that do not have plans do not have DOs in place we're in business we're in that location prior to the adoption of any landscaping codes those are the ones we have difficulty with because there's really nothing to enforce them against any criteria so yes I mean but we do have uh, we do have landscaping incentives in place now uh, for all the major corridors of the city old 41 is an 80 20 match with the city paying 80 yeah. percent that's the old 41 corridor all the other uh 
uh, roadways in the city, the, the commercial roadways, uh, it's a 50-50 match for an incentive mm -hmm. so, so for landscaping. Do, so you do have citywide is at least 50-50. Yes, sir. Yes, That's up to awesome. a certain amount. That's an awesome opportunity. And yeah. because on Old 41, um, the work has already been done. There are 34 properties that need to be addressed, basically for the ones that have plans. And I would like to see at least us to uh, go to them and say, look, you got to replace this, by the way, here's 80% of the money. <laughs> you know? um, it, it was in their, it's in their development plans. They have the landscape plan. They're supposed to be doing it. Uh, letters were sent out for voluntary compliance. We've gone that route to try to encourage them. And I think mandatorily we need to get them to do it. Right. Well, and let's be clear now. I mean, it's my belief that if they are required by their zoning and by their development order to have things in place and maintain them, you know, that is not an incentive issue. That is something that's, that's an agreement they made early on coming into the city into those particular locations. Um, so what we're trying to do is incent those people who cannot get there because they have no plans or because there's something better in place. So well, let's cut that a chase here. I think it's a simple thing. I think we're all in agreement that we, we want the mm -hmm. people to, to be able to avail themselves of this or do this. Let's go ahead and have them uh, have have uh, our staff bring back a precise program that says, look, here's how we're going to and here's how we're going to enforce these issues. Uh, that have to, and here's how we're going to uh, uh, put together a team and how we're going to handle it and how we're going to contact people and to offer this in incentive program. And then they bring that in place. We say, yeah, go for it. That okay. sounds great, but we've already done that. The, the letters, I, the letters have been move, sent I'm, out. Martha, I'm just trying to agree well, with you, okay? Okay, I love that. But what I'm saying is that we have already brought to their attention that they're out of compliance. Well, we have on one corridor. There are on other. one corridor. That's, so, I'm just... Yeah, this is I, a citywide program. Yes sir. yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. I can go with what you're saying, and I think what Councilmember Sons is saying items. is we need to come back that shows you kind of what we're looking to do, how we're looking to do it, and how we're going to match this with our existing landscape plans to make sure that everything works together. Right, and and how you will contact the people, the and, and really and, and really how you're going to handle it because one of the problems before was it wasn't handled real tactfully when it came to letting people know that their 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 properties were substandard. And so, yes, I, you know, we need we need to know how you're going to handle those situations. And well, I, I that think is that not if you a develop the program. And okay, I, uh, on, may yeah, I? Yeah. Okay, and, and there is Martha, a. Martha, I'm going to go to Bill because this isn't a just a two-way conversation. Bill, go ahead. Uh, John, where do we stand with the 34, or is that all code enforcement issue? Councilmember, 34, the code. Don't I'm sorry. 34 that didn't comply with the. Uh, <laughs> it's on your green sheet. So it's 34 and 40 were non-compliant. Six achieve voluntary. There's 34. Oh, properties. those are the, those are results from after the program. I can provide you an updated list. I don't need the, the list. I just, just need in terms to get of the, the 34 that, that we have in compliance. That's really the how do yes, we sir, do I'll that? I'll check on that. Uh, is code enforcement known about those 34? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, they, then we need to see those 34 cases. Yes, sir. That's I'll check with them to see what the number is. Okay. Good. Okay, Martha. Thank you so much, sir. I think Mr. Lonkart was bringing my point, so thank you. And if I could have for a second, there is a voluntary compliance letter that's already been sent out to the properties. We looked at 100, um, in 60 inspections were made. The numbers are right on your green sheet. So there were six places that voluntarily complied. Right. That means 34 haven't. And Carl, I'm not opposed to helping them with that incentive program. I'm really not. Because on all 41, what do we want to see? We want to see the place look nicer. We want to see it get better. We want the energy to pick up over there. We want people to invest in it. And, you know, if it takes some landscape money to help them with that, I'm okay with that. Uh, I don't know about the rest of the council, but I thank you. I thank you for the work because it was a lot of work, the work you already have done well, down at Community Development. And Mike, that was thank a, you. Mike Kirby. Effort, with with the effort. intern that's now moved on, and I don't know if we need to apply for another grant or if we can, but it, it would we'll be really available. wonderful to really boost this city up and get people to comply with what they should already be doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that program was for the 041 quarter, was yes, it sir. not? So if we're going to apply this citywide, would you like to bring back what that program would look like. I think additional assistance would be very helpful. Council, would you like them to bring back a program and how you would fund it, how you would m propose to manage it, whether it's through uh, 
a, a grant or whatever it is. And we'll try to do the same program. If there's nothing, if that's not available, we'll look for something similar. Okay. Yes, Can that be sir. all right? Yep. Good. Good. Do you need a, do you need a motion to that fact, or you know what to do, bring back to us? I Really, I'd like to have a motion just so it's set in stone, if that's okay. Okay. Would you like to make the motion? I make a motion, just what you said, Mayor. Okay. Good. And I'll second <laughs> it. Any other discussion? Roll call. Councilman McIntosh. Aye. Councilwoman Martin. Aye. Councilman Slack. Aye. Mayor Nelson. Aye. Councilman Simmons. Aye. Councilwoman Simons. Aye. Councilman Longhart. Aye. And okay. In my understanding, did that then we will have code enforcement look at the other 34 properties. Well, that's yeah. Correct. I mean, we're going to look at the entire city. Right. Um, Councilman McIntosh, what do you got for us today? I uh, sure just uh, two or three things. One of them I probably should ask during this city manager's uh, report. We, by the time we meet next, we will be in the midst of season and the first National Arts Festival mm -hmm. in downtown Bonita Springs. Uh, the, uh, the Holiday in the Park was wonderful. Not nearly as many drivers as what we're going to have on those National Art Days. How are we parking people? Do we have a, I know we have a plan. What is the plan? Well, the plan, first off, um, <clears throat> we've had these discussions. So um, the parking concern is probably not as great as one would, might think. Um, typically, we have an event like Holiday in the Park or Fourth of July or whatever. You've got people who are coming and they are staying a, a long time. They're not moving. We expect, uh, for a couple of reasons, that the art festival will be <coughs> different. Number one, it's over like, a couple yes. of days, two, two and a half days. Um, number two, you're probably not looking at the amount of people, and if you are, they're spread over that two or two and a half days. And they're also rotating in and out of the site on a more regular basis. They come in, uh, they, they take a look at the art, they buy whatever they're going to buy, they enjoy it, and then they leave and go, and go somewhere else. So the plan is to be... Uh, using the parking facilities that we have and we on, on an ongoing basis have had for overflow parking, which are a lot of our, our, our vacant lots. And I think we're certainly going to monitor this theory we have uh, for the first event to see if there's any uh, changes we need to make as we move towards the second and third events in 14. Oh. I, would, I would prefer to over plan for the first event uh -huh. rather than have a, something go wrong. But I know we've had this conversation before. Uh, I assume we've had conversations with the Benita Springs Art League. Yes. Uh, to say this is the this is the patronage you had on the first day, first hour, and so on. If, if they're okay, that's yep. fine. But this I, is a real opportunity for us to showcase old Benita. Yep. I, 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 I agree, that and that's why we're so excited that uh, the art festival is coming to old um, uh, old Forty One to the downtown area, and uh, I think I think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to be okay at this point in time. Okay. What else you got for us? I got a couple things. We won't meet again until January 15th as a 16th as a group. So I just, 15th, I want to remind you that the day after on that Thursday is the middle school government day, and that's not a big deal. The kids come in. There'll be probably 35 kids. They'll tour City Hall, and then they'll run a mock city council meeting. But on Friday, the next uh, day, two days after we meet again for the first time after the New Year, it's the Stero High School Government Day, and that is a complicated day. I've made contact with, uh, through Diane, with all the, all the potential m mentors, uh, but I don't want you to be caught surprised coming back from vacation or holiday and recognizing that we'd like to have you here as council members for sure on Friday. If you can be here on Thursday, that would be even better. But it's a, an important day for real-life civics lessons. And uh, if you can't be, you can't be, but we'd love to have you here. And, uh, and finally, I, I, as you know, I do a lot of work with education. And I learned the other day, a, a junior to Stero High School, Carson Young came up to me and said, I want to talk to you just a little bit about the moratorium. And uh, his brother, Austin, is a senior, and, and Carson's a junior. Carson. And... Uh, I said, uh, Carson, uh, the, why don't you talk to your brother about getting a life if you're watching <laughs> BTV <laughs> at, at 16 years old? He said, I want to know what's going on in the government. So, folks, I just want you to know our future's out there. They're watching you as leaders. Keep up the good work. Merry Christmas to each of you. Please drive carefully over the holidays. I want to see you all back here on the 15th. Thank you, Thank you to the staff for a great year. Thank you to the Sheriff's Department and all our volunteers. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank very you, much. Mr. Mayor. I'm going to switch it around here and go over to Bill. Thank you, Ben. Um, 
uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. A happy New Year, healthy and healthy, prosperous New Year, and especially to the guys in the guys and gals in green. Uh, you've done a remarkable job every year that I've been here, and before I, that was happening because I know how the how you do it and I really appreciate it from a personal point of view but to everybody in the city that's law abiding we really appreciate you and to the staff obviously a great job this year uh, I can't give accolades out individually but uh, you can but there everybody has done an excellent job as far as I'm concerned from a business perspective you're outstanding from a social perspective you also are outstanding thank you okay, thank you Martha what do you got for us uh, yeah just three um yeah and i want to say merry christmas happy holidays to everybody there will be a uh, paddling um a, a, what you, a lighted kayak and canoe paddle the first on december 21st uh that should be fun brought to you by john Pano and the folks at calusa ghost tours and all those people who participate so we're gonna have the boat parade we have the boat parade in the river but we also have a little canoe and kayak silent paddle on the 21st december 21st i'm going christmas caroling on the 22nd yay um i love that thanks to the folks and nothing like it they're always fun folks um three things one is um according to our charter the mayor should be giving a state of the city report and i think this is an excellent opportunity to spread the joy of why it's great to live in bonita springs and all the things uh, wonderful that we've accomplished in the last year as a council. So um, just a little reminder that we got to get that done. And um, uh, yeah. yeah, it's an excellent opportunity, particularly where we're at right now. So, um, you know, just like I said, Mayor, to spread the Happy Valley joy. Um, Bonita 2046 Sustainability. About six years ago, uh, you know, it was, uh, okay, don't bring any more stuff, five years ago, don't bring any more stuff forward because um, somebody else could be taking care of that on sustainability. And uh, about a year ago, I called staff and I said, hey, when can I vote on the sustainability stuff? When's it coming forward? Bring me something every month, you know, or whatever you have there. I don't have a lot of time left. I want to vote on this stuff. And I never saw anything and I, I just don't know what's happening with it except I've told that staff's been real busy working on other stuff. So I really, really hope that you guys will focus on that. <laughs> may, I, and may I answer that, Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Well, go ahead, go ahead. well, there's a question go ahead. about yes. staff's involvement. Staff has been involved and particularly over community development. Yes. They have a plan. They're creating measures. So if they haven't responded to you, I, I apologize, but we'll find out. Well, I just haven't voted on anything, Steve, and, and, you know, it's been like five years, so, I mean, heck. No, well, it may have, been, may have been five years for you. It's been about a year and a half that we've had a sustainability strategy in place. John. Hi, John. Hello. Oh, well, I, okay. Mr. Mayor, just so everybody understands, we have Jen Hagen that is ready to go. She bothers me on a weekly basis as to when she can start. Uh, we have held off until we have hired our planner so that Jen would have the ability and the time to work on sustainability on a more regular basis. That planner has been hired. I will be discussing with Carl the schedule coming up in the next couple of weeks because we've already had initial discussions, but it took us so long to find a qualified individual with the right qualifications that it pushed that schedule back pretty far. So I want to go back through this with him again. Make sure we're all on the same page to get the process going. I, I'd love to have a vote on January 15th on anything. <laughs> It'd be awesome. We, we, we just won't be some. prepared for yeah, January sure 15th. <laughs> but, I, but I also have to admit to the council, we're trying to do a little bit of agenda management here, too. And as you know, we've had uh, some lengthy, controversial meetings recently. Yes. And we expect sustainability to be coming back to you uh, in, a, in a report, a uh, progress report, and recommendations for future actions That's coming wonderful. up in the early 2014 so okay I really thank you and, and appreciate it and thank you for the work you're doing it wasn't to put you on the hot seat it's just that hey I've been hot to vote on this stuff and I just haven't been able to and it's one of my things and the last thing is I know everybody gets a photo with the mayor but I'd like to everybody when I went to the county commission meeting last time they all get a photo with the people that they're honoring and we're all honoring that person so I'd like to see that we develop a policy well I like you mayor you're not going to be here forever um, that everybody gets a photo with the that. with the recipient because we all honor them 
And um, at the county commission meeting, they're all in their photo. Uh, I won't be here to be in photos, so I won't be breaking any lenses, but um, that would just be a nice thing to do because it does reflect that the council as a whole is, is a body that works together and recognizes our citizens together. All right, anything else? That's it, uh, except that I want to wish each one of you a Merry Christmas, and I know we went through this a little bit tough time, but um, I hope you're all happy and healthy in the new year and that all good things come to you and your families and those you love. Thank you very much. And, uh, hey, what do you got? Certainly happy holidays, Merry Christmas to everybody here and everybody watching, each one of you. It's certainly a pleasure to serve with each one of you. And, you know, for anybody, they probably don't, but for anybody that thinks the decisions we make up here are easy, <laughs> I can tell you they're not. And certainly, you know, the past couple of weeks have been no uh, exception there. Certainly want to thank the staff for what gets done here. There's a lot of exciting things happening in town. And despite the, you know, the folks and the naysayers, um, I, I guess maybe the chamber in particular, um, we're going to get that right out there. We absolutely are going to get it right, and it's going to mean better things for the city yeah. done the right way. Uh, we're certainly going to develop downtown. And Hertz, welcome. Welcome to Bonita Springs. We invite you to stay here. <laughs> not just work here temporarily. Uh, we certainly want you to look around. There's a lot of nice communities here to live and stay and root and start to uh, take root in this community, get involved with this community. It's an amazing community. I was, I was talking earlier how, um, you know, we were given um, uh, Lisa Pace, you know, kind of making fun of her accent. Well, folks, we are in the deep south. I just want to hate to point out the obvious. So I guess Lisa's Pace probably has the correct accent. I certainly don't. But uh, we're all here because we want to be here. This is an amazing community. Let's keep it moving forward the right way, working together. And um, certainly we'll be looking forward. Uh, Dr. Steve, maybe you could help me with this, to hearing the feasibility study at the YMCA for a charter high school. It's time for a high school in Benita Springs. Mm -hmm. I certainly want to keep that ball rolling and look forward to a great 2014. Happy holidays to everybody. Thank you. Okay, thanks. I'm going to go over to Janet. Thank yeah, you. What are you doing? I just want to <laughs> your last. I'll make you last. Please. I want to compliment oh, the um, Imperial River Boat Parade. It was awesome, and every year, you know, you wonder how many boats. And so, I want to really thank the participants um, because without them, we wouldn't have that <coughs> glorious night on our river. So, uh, thanks to the participants and those who planned it and sponsored it. It was. A, a great thing to see it's always so much fun and then I'd also too like to thank our staff thank our volunteers thank everyone in our community and wish everyone a safe and happy holiday and a very Merry Christmas thank you very much Steve Welcome. Yes, thank you mayor uh, first of all I want to thank you mayor uh, today when we were dealing with the issue of the DRGR you made it very clear to the audience that uh, we all re read things sometimes differently we interpret things differently but uh, we always are considerate of each other and respect each other. So thank you for making that uh, well known. Thank you. Um, I want to go back to the Hertz. If I'm not mistaken, Mayor, I believe that uh, you received the call about the Hertz mm -hmm. and then it went over to community development and the way community development handled that. Arlene, John, thank you from the bottom of my heart. This is, uh, this is great, great news for our community. Really great. And who knows what's going to happen after 2015. We just don't know. <coughs> But their professionalism is always out there, and we deeply appreciate it. Um, yesterday at the uh, commissioner's meeting, I was kind of disappointed at the uh, EMS decision uh, because I was there when they were negotiating uh, at the, uh, at the uh, uh, what, what is it? Not Boca Raton. At the firehouse there, yeah. But anyway, and I, I just couldn't believe it. I, I thought, gee, this thing is really good. It looks like it might even work. So, but. We'll live, we'll live through another day. Um, this morning, uh, or, or excuse me, I want to go to the uh, uh, Lee County Sheriff's Office. Uh, thank you so much for the entire year. I mean, this is twice we've had the Vietnam Wall. You guys have always been here. Bobby Hunter, thank you so much for uh, always uh, making sure that things go right. Safety uh, came first always. And if you can believe that you're going from the Gulf Coast Center mall to Riverside Park with that wall and never stopping once because they had it so well coordinated it was unbelievable and he did it twice so thank you for all you for all the things that you guys do we love you and we hope that you you're always going to be here in Benita 
Um, Happy holidays to everybody. Uh, this morning, uh, I know Pastor Bradley mentioned about uh, the militaries and the families. Well, I happen to have uh, my youngest daughter. She is in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And uh, Captain Marquette, is, uh, he's coming home January 15th from six months in Afghanistan. So uh, you know where we're going to be. We're going to be with uh, uh, awesome. Vanessa. So um, happy holidays. Uh, Guys, we've had some tough, tough decisions to make, but the one thing that I know when I leave here that we have respect for each other, and uh, you can't ask for a better group of people to work with. Thank you all. Thank you. Ah, those decisions are duck soup. Wait till I wait till we start tearing down houses to build roads through them. You guys missed out on all that anyway. That was tough, Mayor. That was tough. That was some tough sledding there. This this is nothing. Um, anyway, thank you all. You've been great. It's been it's been a pleasure uh, to be a Sodus Radio and be your colleague. I'm proud proud of staff. Everybody like that. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. I think it's going to be a great New Year. Uh, and I also I, I want to say a special thanks to I've been getting. Uh, a considerable amount of email from people who live in the colony and who live in Pelican Landing who are very supportive of the annexation efforts. I want to thank them for their courage and their willingness to speak up. Uh, it's, it's been a pleasure. They love Benita Springs. That's where they think they live. <laughs> and uh, strangely Funny. enough, uh, they, 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 they love Benita Springs and want to actually be able to vote in there. So I want to thank for all those people for those calls. And you know what? I mean, uh, all we're doing, and I want to reiterate for those people that are watching, because they are watching, is that we just want them to be happy with the decision they make. That is our goal. If they decide to be within the city of Benita Springs mm -hmm. uh, and be voters, that's great. If they don't, that's great, too. Uh, I want to say something special for Debbie. How in the heck do you do this all the time? Yes. I, she doesn't ever get any credit for this, but every time there's a vote, she never stutters, never stammers. Never she always goes to the right person she first. Gets the names I don't get it. And so thank you very much for all you do, and, and Diane as well, um, with putting all this together. Uh, also, um, oddly enough, I know this may be unpopular with some people who are very passionate about what's going on right now. I want to th thank the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, you know what? It's difficult sometimes to get up and, and give a dissenting view that you know it will be unpopular. That's America. That's America. And I can't tell you how many times the public sure isn't bashful about whether you're a group from the beach or you're a group from East of Bonita. We don't get on them for being having a dissenting view. We don't get on them and, and claim, well, they're naysayers. Well, no, they're just expressing an opinion. The Chamber of Commerce decides to have an opinion on something. I am thankful that there are people mm -hmm. who are willing to give dissenting opinions no matter who they are or who they represent. I don't have anything against developers. I don't have anything against business people. I don't against retirees. Uh, that's what makes this work. That's what's always been our strength is to be polite and considerate to everybody's opinion. That's what we're all about. So thank you all for your patience in this regard. And with that, uh, would you like to approve the minutes? I would. It says a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Roll call. Councilwoman Martin? Aye. Councilman Slackta? No. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bam, a first. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Councilman Simmons? Yes. Councilwoman Aye. Simons? Aye. Councilman Long? Aye. Councilman McIntosh? Aye. You couldn't even shake her with that one. <laughs> uh, and at this time, we'll take public comment. Anyone should just to speak at this time and interrupt my lunch, please come forward. Who would dare? Uh, I did not think so. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. Holidays. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Trying to get on your case, I was just trying to get enforcement.